kitchen folks and welcome to another experimental day in home brewing. Today I'm going to have a go at making a root beer flavoured cider. Okay so my root beer flavour is coming from this stuff. It's Aldi's home brand root beer pop. It contains all sorts of uh, additives, things which aren't too good but it doesn't matter because it's going to get concentrated and boiled in my air still. So the first thing I need to do is to add my four litres of root beer into my still. Oh, it's got that root beer smell. This might turn out horrendous and it might turn out quite nice. Actually, the smell of this is taking me back to childhood. Do you remember those Bazooka Joe chewing gums you could get? I think they were germaline flavoured. Yeah, what a weird concept for a flavour. I mean, root beer itself is a weird flavour, isn't it? Let's face it. But it might work in a cider. We don't know till we've tried it. So as you can see, it's very, very active, highly carved, and has the potential to flood out. I'll try and deal with that a little bit before I start the still in. And last but not least, litre number four. So the air still has a capacity of four litres and it will have four litres in it. I'm going to concentrate this down to turn four litres of root beer into 1.5 litres of root beer concentrate, which I'll then add to four litres of apple juice. I'll go through the rest of the ingredients after this stage is done, because this is probably going to be a two day brew. It takes a full day to do this still in. So as you can see, lots of activity. It's way above the full line and I've got to wait for this head to dissipate. So just to try and take a bit of fizz out of that, I'm going to add a little bit of sugar in there. Now watch what happens. Be very gentle with it. It's a bit like a science experiment. When it breaks through the head, doesn't seem to be doing much. And give it a little stir. No, it ain't done anything. It usually erupts. Ah, oh, there we go. It's raising now. There you go. So this will probably take 30 seconds to go down, so I'll just wait. Okay, this is now looking quite settled, so it's time to put the still together. So I've now got to put the still together. It's very straightforward. First of all, you plug it into the mains, which I've done just there. Then this goes on top. The bottom bit gets hot. It creates vapour which comes out through some coils which are cooled by a fan in the top and then that drips out of the spout just here. So basically I'm going to be extracting the water out of the root beer which will leave a concentrated root beer inside here. So we have this spout in the top. I put a collection jug underneath and this jug holds 500 ml. So basically I'm going to have to empty that five times and that will then leave me with one and a half litres of concentrate in there. So electric on, still on, you hear the fan and now it's just a case of playing the waiting game. So it's been about an hour and ten minutes and I'm just seeing the first drips coming through right now. So this is going to be a very long process, it will take all day. Just an update three hours later, nothing dramatic really has happened. I have changed the collection vessel and I'm now on a litre because there's 700ml I emptied it at and I'm just over 300 now. So I'm getting there but this is definitely going to be the rest of today. So it's taken eight hours but finally it's done. Okay, I'm going to dismantle this now and I'm just going to briefly show you inside. It's going to be very, very hot. You'll see steam coming off when I open it. There you go. Now, first impressions of the smell that's left. <sighs> Steamy. It doesn't smell like root beer anymore. It smells more like something really burnt. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, let's persevere. So what I'm going to do, oh gosh, uh, is I'm going to add a couple of tea bags into here to get some tannins out of it. 
or I should say tannins out of them. So one, two. Now, because this is really hot, I don't need to bring it to the boil like I normally would when I'm making cider. I'm just gonna put the lid back on. I'm not gonna switch it back on. In fact, I'm disconnecting the power altogether. And I'm now just gonna leave this for an hour with the tea bags in there to steep. And then in an hour's time, I'll squeeze them and take them out. And then I'm leaving this overnight and I'm gonna make the cider in the morning. Right, the tea bags have been in an hour. Still steamy. It doesn't have to retain the heat, this thing. It's absolutely brilliant for that. Let's have a little look inside, eh? So, yeah. Yeah, it now smells like um, a sweet burnt tea. Right, I'm going to get the tea bags out. Got them on a slotted spoon, and just using the back of a dessert spoon, I'm going to give them a squeeze. Get the flavours and tannins out of them. And that'll do. Right, so for today, this is over now. I'm just going to put the lid back on to keep any contaminants out. Push that to one side and I'm going to pick the recipe up in the morning when it comes to adding apple juice, nutrient, yeast, etc. Catch you then. Good afternoon from the kitchen, folks. It's the next day and I'm now ready to get on with putting my cider together. So here's the ingredients. So I'm making cider in the turbo cider method using apple juice from concentrate. Check out the Facebook group, Turbo Ciders for All. This is um, apple juice which contains just pasteurized apple juice from concentrate, no nasty additives. To complement that, I've got 200 grams of white powder. No, it's not breaking bad, it's brewing sugar. My yeast of choice today is Lalvin EC1118 champagne sparkling wine and cider yeast and to give that a bit of extra feeding I'm giving it some yeast nutrient. Here is the one and a half litres of concentrated root beer in the air still uh, which also had the two tea bags in it and my brewing vessel of choice today is the Warhorse, the good old one gallon 4.54 litre Demijohn. So let's crack on! So this being a turbo cider is basically the easiest cider in the world ever, ever, ever. So I'm just going to open my first apple juice and get that squeezed in and get this into the demijohn. So I'm using three litres of apple juice because I've got one and a half litres of concentrated roof be root beer. Roof beer, that's a different kind of beer. One that you drink on the roof, presumably. But this is one that you drink underground as it's a root beer. And litre number two. And just while I'm giving this a good squeeze, are you following my YouTube? www.mosshomegarden.co.uk Hit the subscribe button or follow button or whatever it says. Press the bell, get notifications, make me smile. Thank you. So this is now two litres of apple juice into the Demijohn. I'm now going to add the concentrated root beer. And it is quite syrupy. I'm not getting that root beer smell anymore. It smells more caramelly. Definitely smell the tea though. Now I'd normally dissolve the brewing sugar in warm water, but in all honesty, it does dissolve pretty easily. So I'm just gonna tip it in, put the apple juice in, and then I'm gonna swish it around and make sure that there's none on the bottom of the vessel before I continue. So it does dissolve really easily. And obviously I'm gonna get a big blockage now, which is fine. It's always fun to watch it go and go through. So it is best practice to dissolve it, but I'm just cutting corners today. I've got quite a bit to do brew wise. And this is already melting the um, uh, brewing sugar. I can already see it starting to go in places. And this will just go blob and go through the funnel very shortly. She builds, the dripping begins, the flood will soon commence. Ooh, wasn't that exciting? Before I go any further, I'm just going to add a teaspoonful of yeast nutrient. So I'll give it a nice uh, heaped one, and that goes. And I'm going to wash the funnel through with a bit of apple juice just to get any residual sugar off it. And 
now I'm going to give this a right good stir and shake because I want to make sure that that brewing sugar isn't sat in the bottom of the vessel and it is actually dissolved. It will dissolve, it dissolves really easily and because I've only used 200 grams that's why I've just done it this way. If I'd used a larger amount then I would have definitely melted it first. That will do. Jobs are good and let's get the rest of the apple juice in. Next, I need to take the original gravity. So I need to sacrifice 100 mil for the greater good. I won't put that back in, and that does leave a little bit more space in the top. Actually, I am going to put that back in because it's left too much space in the top. And I know that this isn't really going to build a Krausen, so I want to get as much as possible out of there. And that 100 mil will make the difference between five and a half and six bottles when it comes to bottling, I think. Yep, so. I wouldn't normally put it back in because of cross-contamination, but I'm going to risk it today. So the original gravity of this is, can I have a drum roll please? It is on 1.050 exactly 1050. So very gently back in. So I won't be having a, a pre-brew taste. It's going to be all a big surprise. So in goes my stainless steel funnel and in goes, I'm trying to get a full heaped teaspoonful um, and I'm getting right at the bottom of the jar. So that's most of one and that's a bit more. In fact, sod it. Let's just chuck it in. That's the last of my EC1118 and my next side is going to be brewed with a different yeast. Exciting. So in that goes. Now you can see it's just sat there on top. I'm going to leave it sat on top for five minutes and then I'll agitate this. I'm just making sure that there's nothing stuck around the edges of the demijohn. Looks pretty good to me. Looks like Coca-Cola, doesn't it? Right, let's get the airlock in. So for now, this is done. So you can see the airlock and the demijohn labelled up with the name of the cider, today's date, and of course the original gravity. So the next film that you see from me will be an update when fermentation begins. It'll be later today at some point, so I'll see you soon. So a little update three hours later, fermentation has begun. There's a very, very thin line of Krausen around the edge there. You can see a tiny little bit on top. Uh, the bubbler is going extraordinarily slowly, but it is happening. So yeah, I'll give you an update when it's kicked in properly. Just the next morning update. And you can see that the Krausen hasn't really developed very much, but fermentation is absolutely, definitely happening. And another fermentation update a day later. And as you can see, it looks exactly the same pretty much. And it's bubbling away nice and steady. So root beer day five and it's not going to plan. We've got a messy airlock. It's got a little bit too excited. It's definitely overfilled and the Krausen grew more than what I expected it to. So it's back on the naughty step, which is the kitchen drainer. Good morning from the kitchen folks. It's my root beer cider bottling day. Let's have a look at it. Here it is. It's been in the Demijohn for seven weeks. It's probably fermented for about three to four weeks on a decent basis, but it's slowed right down for the past few weeks. And right now it's not really doing anything whatsoever. So today I'm gonna to get it out of there and into these bottles. So I'm using five 750 ml bottles and then I've got a smaller bottle which was either a cider or a beer bottle. I don't think I'll get six 750s looking at where the neck is there and the layer of sediment at the bottom. So I'm just going to hedge my bets and go with these and hope for the best. Anyway, in each of the 750 ml bottles goes this amount of priming sugar. This is standard household caster sugar and the priming sugar is what will help to give my cider a sparkle. It will create a tiny fractional secondary fermentation, 
within the bottle. The byproduct of that will be CO2. And when the pressure from the CO2 builds up, that's when you get a fizz. Fingers crossed. So then it is bung out. Siphoning tube goes in. The bottom of the tube is literally there. It's just above the sediment line. So it's a very, very dark liquid, but I'm guessing it's clear because the sediment has settled in a distinct layer at the bottom, but it's impossible to tell it's so dark. If the first bit that comes out of the tube is murky, it doesn't matter because it's going into the hydrometer tube. Let's rock and roll. And there we go. And it's coming out lovely, actually. And into the first bottle. Yeah, that looks good. I think I can smell the root beer. Fingers crossed. But yeah, look, it's a nice Coca-Cola colour in the tube. And I'm just about to fill my first bottle and go on to the second. And that's the second bottle. And that's the third bottle. We've got obviously got a bit of a reaction to the priming sugar already. So I've got my bungs softening in very hot water. I'm going to start pushing those into the bottles as I'm doing this. Okay, the reason I put the bungs in hot water is A, it gives them a last bit of a clean and B, it makes them malleable so you can push them in easy enough into the bottles. So I think I've got the number of bottles just about right for this one. I wouldn't have got six, seven, fifty mils out of this. I think I might have spoke too soon. I didn't even get that one filled up. Ah, okay, so I've ended up with five 750s and we'll just call that one a sample. So we'll just get the other bungs pushed in. I'm probably going to be watching this in September, but I'm actually bottling currently on the 20th of July. This is the day after it was 40 degrees yesterday, which is why I've got a bit of a dab on because it's still very warm in the house. Okay, I've got my five bottles here. I'm going to cage them, but I'll just demonstrate it on one of them to you. The cage holds the bung in place because when that secondary fermentation takes place in the bottle, that becomes a rocket without the cage. So I pull the cage down and twist it and twist it and twist it until it's tight and it won't really comfortably twist anymore. And there we go. That is one bottle bunged and caged. You don't need to see me do that for all of them. I'll be back. So that's my bottles bunged and caged. I'm just giving them a rinse in the sink to get any sticky residue from the outside before labelling them. But before I can label them, I need to establish what the final gravity is. So let's get that hydrometer in there. Oh, and that's so nice. And it's finished on a final gravity of exactly one point zero zero zero. So I need to work out the final alcohol by volume. And in order to do that, I take the original gravity of one point zero five zero. I deduct from that the final gravity of one point zero zero zero, which equals 0.05. And then I multiply this figure by 131.25 and the final alcohol by volume is, drum roll please, 6.56%. Let's just say 6.6%. Uh, I've rounded up by that tiny fraction of a decimal just because there will be that secondary fermentation in the bottle. So 6.6 .6 is probably quite accurate. I've got my labels made up in a very simple Microsoft Word template. Let's get these printed out. So I've dried my bottles off and now I'm just labelling them. And there they are. Welcome to the living room folks. This is where my root beer cider will condition for the next month. And here it is, it's just on top of my drinks cabinet along with some other drinks that are conditioning. The conditioning process is whereby the yeast will smash apart the sugar, develop the sparkle and also the flavour will begin to develop and come through. It's the middle of summertime and it's a warm room in summertime. Plus inside my drinks cabinet I have a light that comes on every evening for five hours and it warms the entire shelf. 
up there. So this room is connected to my conservatory and you can see it is literally a greenhouse in here and it's a very warm conservatory because it's south facing. So the next film that you see from me will be in about a month's time when it comes to opening and tasting. Catch you then folks. Hey from the kitchen folks, it's my root beer grand opening night. This has been conditioning in the bottle for one month and fingers crossed, I'm hoping I've got a sparkle. Let's have a look at that bung, that is raised. That suggests to me that there's pressure in here so hopefully fermentation has taken place. So I'm hoping for something which has got a pop. When I pour it I'm going to get a sparkle. I'd like the smell and the taste of root beer and I want it to look good in the glass but really really I want to be able to taste that root beer. Am I going to get it? Let's find out. Right, so I'm just going to remove the cage. Am I going to get a pop? Yes! Ho oh, ho! And a pop it was. Look at that. That's a bad boy. Right. Into my good and Corulas glass. Oh, it looks like fizzy Coca Cola. Lovely stuff. I'm just appreciating that for a minute. Well, the smell is definitely cider. It's not root beer, but it's definitely cider. Right. Cheers, folks. It's a medium. In fact, it's a medium sweet. So what's the ABV? 6.6% .6 medium sweet cider. I'm not getting root beer per se, but I'm getting something which I can't put my finger on. Now, if you'd given me this blind, there's absolutely no way on this earth that I would have said root beer. But it's nice. It's drinkable. It's actually a really lovely flavour. If there was a Venn diagram of root beer, Coca-Cola and caramel, this would be in the middle bit. And we all love a Venn diagram, don't we? Yeah, now I'm thinking about it because I'm consciously aware that there's root beer there. I'm understanding the flavour and I, I am getting it. But a complete stranger would have thought, probably thought somewhere like around caramelish or Coca-Cola-ish or something like that. I'm certainly not disappointed. It's actually nice to do a medium sweet cider for a change. I haven't done one of these for quite a while. They're normally on the medium to dry side. So it's nice to go on the other end of the scale in terms of the flavour. It's a very drinkable cider. It doesn't taste like 6.6%. .6%. If you'd given me this, I might have said like four to 5%. So it's definitely like up there for a bit of like, oof. So yeah, I'm happy with this. It's decent, it's got a nice flavor. Root beer, not huge on the taste, but it's there, it registers, but it's more caramelly as well. Anyway, I'm happy, I'm gonna enjoy this. So cheers folks, and I'll catch you on the next brew. <sighs> the film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv 
again if you could subscribe to that channel it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography as well as some stories then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.